I might do a recording as a backup. Okay. You're good. Okay. Good evening, everyone. And thank you. Thank you for bearing with us. It is um, June, Wednesday, June 28th is 7.20. We're a little late. We were having some technical difficulties. So thank you for joining the Community Development and Budgetary Priorities Committee. My name is Serena Muniz and I am the chair of the committee. I am joined by my committee members who will introduce themselves. I am Malcolm Gray. I am the co-chair of the Community Development and Budget Priorities Committee. Hi, and I'm Christine Culpepper. A uh, member of the Community Development and Budgetary Priorities Committee. Yeah. <laughs> um, so today we have uh, the distinct pleasure of welcoming and joining Mr. Sage Rivera, Chief Development and Programs Officer at Destination Tomorrow. Destination Tomorrow is the LGBTIAQ plus um, um, organization um, in, in the Bronx, um, but de definitely in this district that has um, a presence in Community Board 11. Some of you may um, are may be privy to Destination Tomorrow, some of you may not, um, but because we are ending so much, right, during June, yeah. We have so much to celebrate during June, um, specifically Pride and Juneteenth and the Puerto Rican Day Parade celebrations and Father's Day and um, anything else that we, um, you know, I mean, we, we had a lot of events during um, the month of June and we thought it so perfect to end um, our, um, I guess, session for before the summer, our Community Development and Budgetary Priorities Committee session with uh, Destination to tomorrow in honor of pride and to invite Mr. Rivera to talk about Destination Tomorrow, um, the organization um, nationally here in the district and um, and yeah, and everything that you guys are doing. So welcome, Sage. Thanks so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. So um, if, if I get started, uh, do, I, I'm OK to share. Yes. All right, so then I'm going to do this. I've never shared on WebEx before, so um, sorry if I have any um, hiccups, but it's my first time. I'm going to go ahead and do this, and then I'm going to go like this. All right, so y'all see it? Yes. Okay. Um, wait, content from Memorial provides. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, like Serena says, I am the chief development and programs officer for destination tomorrow, the Bronx's LGBTQ center. And very simply put is that, um, us here at destination tomorrow, it is our belief that people, regardless of their sexual identity or gender expression, deserve a space where they can call their own. We're basically like the Bronx's or like, I, I like to say Northern New York city Citadel for the LGBTQIA plus population. Um, we provide a plethora of services to the community, um, both internally and externally referral based, connecting people um, to the things that would address their needs, but also creating community and affirming them in who they are. Okay, what I have here right in front of you and to the lower left um, hand side is just two of our locations that are on 149th Street, we're right above the furniture store and Taco Bell and the uh, meat butcher market um we're on the third floor of those two buildings and it is within those two buildings that our administrative hub is is at um but uh, also a lot of our one-on-one -on -one services and our, our some of our recreational and youth programs i'm gonna go over our many programs um that we have and let you know um how they're separated and um a little bit of how we provide them our programs here at destination tomorrow i like to say are separated in four different tracks um and as i go through each slide each slide will be dedicated to a track of programming that we have so our first track is go ahead educational enrichment services here are educat educational enrichment services at um, Destination Tomorrow are just they um, is provided. Uh, oh, this this has the audio with it and too and everything. Okay, 
<laughs> um, it provides an individualized plan based on the goals of the specific specific participant. We have our own internal GED program, but also um, we provide financial literacy, um, coaching and entrepreneurship, LGBTQ competency training, LGBTQ sensitivity and affirming workshops. And we also facilitate technical assistance to various gender sexuality alliances, GSAs, and various schools throughout the Bronx. Um, through our educational enrichment services, we are able to um, connect individuals to the different tools necessary to accelerate their um, um, educational goals. Our next tract is um, our outreach engagement and prevention. Um, it's a mouthful, but um, basically everything within here is sort of like the face of our agency. Um, within this tract is where um, um, our outreach lives. So whenever people need us to like table at a health fair or make a presentation about our agency in different places, um, such like the one I'm doing now, um, our outreach and, and engagement um, department is usually engaged. <clears throat> in, sorry. I don't know why I'm nervous. No. <laughs> um, engaged in order to have that happen. Within this tract or within this department, we have HIV counseling and testing, syringe exchange, food pantry. We also have a community closet for people who are in need of, of clothing, um, whether for personal needs or professional needs, prep navigation, and hygiene kits and contraception packages. We also do the Narcan trainings. Um, for individuals are, who are interested in learning that skill in order to prevent um, um, overdose. The next track is our support services. So these are the one-on-one -on -one dyadic services in which um, when um, individuals come in and present certain needs, we're able to um, connect them to the resources necessary. Those resources include everything from medical referrals and mental health referrals, assistance with SNAP and health insurance enrollment, um, assistance with uh, affirming um, surgery referrals, um, patient navigation services, and then our various um, specialized case management programming. One of them is our STRIVE case management programming um, for people who are um, HIV positive or, or living with AIDS, and our telemedicine services, where people can come into our facilities and see a doctor live um, and be able to assess their needs that way. Um, Another one of our bigger programming um, is our switch housing programming, which is a transitional 90 day um, program you know, for individuals who are a part of the um, gender variant community, basically transgender, gender nonconforming and gender non-binary, who may have been um, who may have had a history in either sex work or sex trafficking or um, or victims of sexual exploitation. Um, it is for individuals who are 25 and older and is intended to provide it, um, an, emerging, an emergency housing of sorts for individuals to get back on their feet and be reacclimated um, into society connected to the resources that they so desperately need. Um, so that's all within our support services. Within the tracks that I just named now, a couple of those services from those tracks live in our Barnes Avenue location, which is our third location. Those specific services are our um, food pantry program that is conducted every Thursday, our educational programming conducted from Tuesday to Fridays, and our strive programming. So out of those three tracks that I just outlined for everyone, the programming that lives within them um, that is specific to this location, which is within the district, are these um, programming right now with um, the potential for a lot more growth and more things to come. The last track is our general center programming. Within that, we have our very various LGBTQ specific community discussion groups. Um, we have cyber engagement programming where we have specific um, groups that we run online for those um, who'd like to um, be a part of our groups from the comfort of their homes and various health and wellness workshops. Also within our general center programming is our youth programming. Now that is facilitated from our um, 149th Street location where our, we have our drop-in center 
that is um, conducted as an after school programming for young people where they have a host of different groups, everything from um, our gaming group to dance classes to um, discussion groups for youth and and, and um, different issues that they want to talk about and visual art um, programming and showcases. Also within our center programming is the various events that we do throughout the borough. I'm proud to say that we have a host of amazing events we, we do in different um, places from um, um, throwing balls at Concrete Plant Park to a big, beautiful event we just had on the High Bridge to um, the Bronx Pride Festival that we just had on, on Westchester and Brook Avenue, where we had over um, a thousand, of over a thousand Bronx sites get together in community and enjoy food and great entertainment and get connected to a lot of different resources. Um, the last thing I want to highlight is that um, Destination Tomorrow was also one of the few agencies in the Bronx that um, garnered the resources resource to do um, COVID disparities programming because the city wanted to um, really get a hold on or get a grasp onto how um, um, COVID really, uh, the COVID pandemic really affected certain communities. And we were in charge of really assessing and, and, and helping out the communities of the South Bronx, um, mainly um, Mount Haven and the Hunts Point neighborhoods. And we were able to um, connect and engage with over, um, I, I, I want to say over like, a hundred thousand um, different Bronx sites and help really get the opinion on what resources um, were really scarce and um, were really um, what disparities were magnified because of COVID. Um, some of which was food security, safety, and nutrition education, um, things around community support services, and just general COVID services. And we were able to help the communities of um, 104, 54, 55, 59, and 74 and um, help them get connected to the resources they need. So um, with that said, that's sort of a snapshot of what Destination Tomorrow, your Bronx LGBTQ Center is, is about. Um, again, I'm Sage Rivera. I'm here. Um, if anybody has any questions or would like to follow up, on on the stuff that we do and what we're about. Serena did give a brief mention that um, we have extended um, or, or across some borders of sorts in which a new location has been opened in Atlanta as Atlanta's LGBTQ center. So that so that's great. And we aim to echo the services that we have done here in our great borough in the city of Atlanta. But um, as long as I'm here, um, I'm at your disposal. Um, to really, really um, help and magnify the needs and the um, and 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 affirm the the great community that we serve. That um, is, although um, deeply marginalized in, in, in a lot of ways, but still has the 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 spirit of resiliency to make it through. So, thank you. Thank if you. Any questions, concerns, comments? I'm here. Yes. No, we, we definitely have questions and we're just super excited um, to have you here with us because uh, we know that, um, you know, we, we, we've been talking about having you join us and, and, and learning more about the services that the Lydig, um or the Barnes, I should say, um, Avenue location offers that falls within this district. So we, we know it's a transitional 90 day housing, um, you know, I guess, um, uh, facility, and then, um, we also know that you provide, um, uh, you have a pantry that's on Thursdays. Um, we know that. So the, the, the other things, right? Like the, um, the medical or the educational component, you said that there was a strive. I think you said at Barnes, we have, um, Tuesdays you, and through Fridays education. Um, and it's for 25 year olds and over. Yes. Yeah, so um, b b basically that that um, that's two programs but mixed together. So the um, the the switch housing um, is for twenty five and over people who are of transgender experience, so gender non-binary, 
and have had a history in either um, sex work, sexual exploitation, or um, sex trafficking. Okay, and that's specific to that program, that um, 90 day transitional housing program. Now, aside from that, and, and that's the seven, that's seven day a week programming. I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that. Now, the Tuesday through Friday is the educational programming in which we provide, um, we have GED classes there on the second floor, um, um, various educational workshops that take place and trainings um, that is also facilitated from um, the Barnes Avenue location. Okay, and if we wanted to share um, or, or and or attend with um, share with the community and ourselves attend, you said you had programming that uh, was, um, you know, gender affirming uh, programming and um, there was also competency, um, you know, programming. So would like the general public be able to sign up and go and learn and or would you be able to come to us? And maybe do um, such a presentation. Yes, absolutely. So um, basically, within those four tracks, we have different directors who are in charge of those departments, right? So um, I'd be more than happy to connect you to our director of educational enrichment, who is the person that sort of um, um, goes out and delivers those trainings to whatever entities. They go out to schools, they've gone out to hospitals and um, various community um, groups like yourself. Okay, do you have any questions? Luke? Christine, do you have any questions? Yeah, um, sorry Sage, I'm you know just so excited that you're here and uh, I'm honestly shocked that I didn't know about you guys sooner. Um, and when I found out that you guys were in the neighborhood, I, I was completely shocked that I had not heard of you guys. Um, how long have you been in the community? So that's a really good question. So what happened was we acquired the facility right before the pandemic. So I would say that we got the keys, if I'm not mistaken, that um the first of february and then the pandemic hit in march right march 2020 and then so that put a lag and a strain on a lot of us being being able to begin services it's only since the pandemic has dwindled down that we've been able to go ahead and build up a momentum of um being able to like um um add on and and sort of um advertise the services that we do there. Um, I know the space. We have been um, so grateful to share the space with a lot of community partners who have used the space for different community meetings and different things like that. But we also have been able to utilize the space to do certain events. Just um, two Tuesdays ago, we had a community um, clothing drive where members of the LGBTQ community but also um, members of the community um, within itself came in and got free clothes. And it was so beautiful because, um, you know, I, uh, of course, there is, a, I like to say, a healthy Albanian presence and, you know, Latino presence and things like that. But um, quite a few um, Moroccan individuals came in. And so we just started playing uh, Moroccan music and, and having a good time and they were able to come and you know get pants get clothes get shoes and things and and, and learn about the stuff that we do um and so as time long story short as time has progressed we've been able to um loud in the voice of like yeah we're here we're doing stuff and um that's wonderful more people yeah i mean I, i'm really interested in knowing um, how do we, now that we know that you're in the community, right? How do we become helpful to you, right? Because I know what wonderful things you, you know, you're doing for the community, right? But how does the community help your organization? What things can we do to offer support or assistance, things like that? Yeah, I mean, this is a great start. 
um, being able to have the chance to speak to the community one on one and to, like to to spread the word that um, this service not only here, but it's a service that's necessary because, um, you know, um, LGBTQ people are everywhere and we don't turn anyone one away ourselves. We have a focus that's a LGBTQ focus, but allies and individuals outside of the community are welcome to um, engage in the services that we provide and, um, you know, are able to help out in any way possible. So um, visibility is a really big asset that, that we add, you know, and it also like, um, you know, it builds a sort of clout, which is necessary for any agency to um, gain the trust of not only the community they serve, but the community that they're in. Awesome. So I don't, I don't want to take up a lot of time. You know, if there are any other questions, I could always come back with more questions. I'm super curious about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, we'll keep asking. About. Keep asking the questions because I was I, I have questions too. So we can, you know, I don't know how long you want to be here, Sage, but we definitely want you to be here. We want, we really want to just uh, like Christine said, that was going to be one of our collective questions. It's like, how can we help you? Um, we appreciate that you're here during our committee uh, meeting. We would love if you would come back and maybe join our full board um, in September. We're taking a break in July and um, August, but, um, you know, this committee in September will have a public hearing, um, you know, in general for the district needs. So if there are any needs that you feel, um, you know, that that are necessary to um, to assist in programming and or, you know, capital expenses or whatever, that is something that we um, have the ability to include in our in our budget request, um, you know, that it's you know, it's not a guarantee, right? But we, we, we put forth all of our asks. Um, we want to learn from you. We want you to also know what's happening in our community. Like you said, we have a, 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 a you know, a, a, a diverse, a very beautifully diverse community of just every ethnicity that you can imagine. And we get along so well. Um, I wanted to know in terms of the um, transitional um, facility, how many um, um, occupancies are in the building and are they all filled? So as of right now, or what I can say is it is a 32 bed facility. I want to say we're at um, 70%. Capacity right now, and because that that's because it it fluctuates, because it's a transitional um, program. You know, our program now, people. I can say it's one of the biggest misconceptions that happens the most um, is that we're technically not an emergency housing program in the full sense of the word, uh, or the first sense of the phrase. That um, we're definitely not the First option. Um, um, right now, we are building, or one of the things that we want that we need help in is to increase our capacity to be able to be that. We're the place that, um, you know, um, that sort of once you're in an emergency housing capacity or something like that, or this can help you get the boost um, necessary because it all lives in one spot. Um, so, um, that being said, um, w right now we're about uh, at like 70% capacity, um, and which, um, may change, um, in two weeks. Um, you know, it may get more or may get less because one thing we're not shy of is people coming through our doors and requesting the service. And how do people do that? Like if someone needed assistance today, how would I refer them to you? How would I, you know, do that? Outside of, you know, being able to yeah. reach you. So, um, I would say right now our general numbers are, you know, our general contacts are the best way. Um, you can call the you can call our number, um, which was on the last slide that I can give. And what I would love to do is also give you like a, a bunch of our brochures just so you can have it there at the office. 
Yes. And so that way you can hand it there. And because if you call our general number and say, hi, I'm interested in switch programming. Hi, I'm interested in a transitional pilot. I mean, nine times out of 10 people call us and say, hi, I'm interested in housing. That's what it is. And then our receptionist knows to know, well, tell me your situation. And our receptionist knows whether to um, put it to um, our intake case manager or um, or our switch housing um, workers. And um, um, ba yeah, so basically um, that that's the best way because in order to be engaged in any of the programs that I said, um, our intake needs to be done. Our intake is really simple, but we, just like any service agency, we want to have a baseline for clients for when they come in in order to be able to um, um, connect them to the needs necessary. So the best way is always for someone to call and make an intake appointment and then be connected to whether it be switch housing or any other kind of housing referral that they need. I saw, I believe in the chat, somebody asking for the general agency um, email. That's in, that's info at destinationtomorrow.org. Um, or they can um, email our intake case manager, which is Nia. And her email is simply NIA, Nia, at destinationtomorrow.org. Great. Oh. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> cool. Perfect. And uh, so, do you have, do you have like any type of like, summer programming? And also like what type of, what age groups do you guys cater to? Okay, wonderful. Uh, what was the first question? I'm sorry, you said Exceller. What? Uh, like summer programs. Ah, uh, summer program. So the programming that I I said is year round. Um, there 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 isn't anything specific that um sort of like um changes with with the program that we do. What happens is the programming that I mentioned does do, does do a lot more things like outdoors. You know, so, um, like I said, the, the agency gets involved in a lot of different events outdoors. We just had the pride thing. We just did a thing on the high bridge, which was wonderful. Um, and, you know, on our summer schedule, we have, um, cookouts planned. We have various field days planned. We also have, um, um, um and these are all through with partnerships with different organizations and wonderful agencies who have worked with us um, on collaborating and expanding programming. For instance, we have a beautiful relationship with the Bronx River Alliance. So we do like LGBTQ paddling days or pride paddling days um, on the river. Um, we we also um, have a great relationship with the people here at St. Mary's Park. So when they do a movie night or things like that, we we joined that right now. Um, we're working with um, our assembly woman to do a, a big cookout, um, and we're planning this like in advance in August. Um, I would say the best way to learn about things like that is, I mean, the best way is our social media. I you know I I just have to say it. We do do mailers or and or like emailers. But if you follow us on Instagram or on Facebook, or on Twitter, it's probably going to get there first. Right. So, yeah. Um, and those handles are destination tomorrow 452. For a second. And also, do you guys like, have any events planned within the district? Destination tomorrow 452. That's the Instagram handle, right? Yes, it, that is. On Facebook is Destination Tomorrow One. Okay, so within the district, um, like I said um, before, we just did one, which was the big clothing drive, which was awesome. Where it was so good that we may have like two or three more. Awesome. Because Do you know, um, time of year. Um, we're we're aiming to have another one, maybe if not, um late July, early August, and then another one in the fall. We have attracted the attention of some sponsors, which are some, you, I mean, I, I don't want to announce anything yet because the, the ink has to dry, 
<laughs> but you know, it, it, it was just such a beautiful thing that um, you know, we we turned the storefront into like a little Macy's, you know what I'm saying? And people come in. We had um, you know, somebody there like giving makeup tips to people and stuff like that, but also um you know, people were able to get clothes and cleaning supplies um, all, all in one shot. Um, and, and it was wonderful. And we hope to um, do that event again within that. And to tie into what um, Christina asked earlier, one of the ways to help is um, if anybody wants to volunteer, <laughs> you know, because um, although this is a free service and we're getting things for free, um, a big help is being to let people know, okay, everybody, you know, it's only two Clorox wipes per person. Right. Oh, yeah. could, I, could, I, could I throw out like maybe like a winter um, event, like for, for clothing? Because uh, I think that that gives oh, us yeah. to get our community. Yeah. yeah. You know, it allows to work with you guys on that. And then Malcolm, the one thing that Sage didn't mention is that he mentioned clothing drive, but all of these clothes were free. I mean, were new. Okay. Yes, yes, um, they, they were new, um, but some of the, no. So let let me. Most of them were new. Okay. Some of them were donated. Okay. Okay. Someone would 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 donate it. Um, and and that's how we, because a, a a lot of people come to us and say, "Hi, can we donate clothes and things like that?" And we're a little meticulous on how we evaluate the clothing and stuff. Um, um, um just because um, the the population could be really particular with, with certain things. So we just want to make sure that um, you know, we we do things that um that'll be conducive to the mission of what we want to accomplish and yes we had a clothing drive last year actually that was our first thing i was just naming the most immediate things but yeah it will happen in the winter with a whole bunch of um coats hats scarves socks and and, and things like that please yeah if so please come back to us so we can like partner on that i, I think you know that's something mm -hmm. that we can work with which mm -hmm. should love to do yeah, um, we can start doing that. Yeah, and it's also we have a question by Efrain Gonzalez on um, in the gallery. He asks, mm -hmm. "Is your organization connected with hospital social workers for referrals in the Bronx?" Yes, we are um, happy to be connected to um, um, the health and ho health and hospital um, network, in which there are two pride clinics located in Lincoln Hospital. And in Jacoby Hospital, they both have, um, you know, pride clinics there in which we have a close relationship. We also have um, some relationships with our friends at um, Bronx Care and the Engage Network at Montefiore. A lot of people don't know that um, Montefiore has a program called Engage NYC in which individuals who are looking um, for a service that may be a little bit more LGBTQ affirming, they can go to the Engage NYC website of Montefiore and find a provider that would be um, adequate to the, to their needs around that. Okay. And I saw and various various FQHCs <laughs> all over the Bronx. Okay, uh, we're great friends with Union. We're um, um, amazing friends with Colin Lord Bronx, and we're wonderful friends with um, Sun River. Um, so yeah, we have we have a beautiful, healthy network of um, healthcare providers. What I will say is that um, a, a big issue the community faces is the barriers in um, being able to reach adequate mental health options. A lot of the times, people within the community, their best mental health option is a FQHC that can only offer you mental health if you're registered with their PCP. So if I find an amazing doctor at the Pride Clinic in Jacoby Hospital, and I love that doctor, but I need mental health services, and I did not like the mental health provider at Jacoby, but I love the mental health provider at Sun River, I have to leave my amazing doctor at Jacoby and register with a PCP at Sun River, not knowing if I'm going to like them or not, just so I can get the mental health services. So, you know, there's a lot of things, you know, 
bigger issues, but I like to say that and stuff because it's one of the biggest barriers um, we, you know, we run into sometimes. Um, Unfortunately, that has a lot to do with regulatory um, and regulations that a lot of, um, you know, certain FQHCs, for instance, don't necessarily have control over. That's just the way that it is, um, you know, made up in terms of a comprehensive holistic healthcare sort of practice. But yeah. I totally um, get what you're saying in that. Why would I want to leave my provider that I love and then go, you know, seek, um, you know, and and then, you know, so that that definitely is something to to talk about and try to figure out, you know, um, uh, I guess a way to circumvent that if, if at all even possible. We know that healthcare is right now, so, well, be, you know, healthcare, uh, mental health has been something even pre pandemic, right? That a lot of people um, were facing, um, you know, and um, stigmas behind it. And then now even more so, um, and that's something that, that we're seeing that's more prevalent with, you know, our youth, especially in the LGBTQIA um, community. Um, so if we can be some sort of, I guess, uh, conduit and or asset to that connection, or maybe we can talk about maybe doing a town hall, you know, something along those lines where we can just talk about your needs, these needs, the community needs, invite our elected officials. Maybe that's something um, that we can, you know, support in doing, but, you know, bring absolutely, here. absolutely. And, um, and yeah, th thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think there is a health mental health conversation that's going to be happening tomorrow with, with yes. our congressman, as a matter of fact. Taurus, and yeah. Where is mm -hmm. that going to be? That's at Lincoln Hospital, right? Hospital. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Javier Bracera? Yeah. 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 Awesome. And Christine, I saw your hand up earlier. Do you have any other questions? Uh, well, the, the question that I had was answered by uh, by Sage. Um, it was about the, the, the clothing drive, I guess you guys had, and that there was new items and also um, things that were um, donated. Um, I, I mean, there's so many, you know, questions that I have. I, I feel like I don't want to take up too much of his time if he's, you know, um, yeah. Well, I I, I also share my, my 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 email and stuff like that. You can feel free. I you know we can have a meeting. Um, One of the things quickly, Sage, and I think that we had discussed this before, and we were trying to get statistics um, about you know CB eleven and the community, the LGBTQ community in CB eleven. I'm not sure if that's something that you have access to. And I know because you said you're fairly new to the community that maybe that would be hard to, to get at the moment, but moving forward, we really would love to know that. Um, you probably know that we raised, uh, or we have a flag LGBTQ two flags at our community board office. Um, first time ever. And so, um, I, there, there was very little pushback. Correct. Uh, Serena Malcolm. Yeah. Yeah, it was very, mm -hmm. very little pushback. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm always wondering, you know, how much do we know about the community in CB11? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. You know, sometimes people are shy. Um, they don't want to be out, um, especially maybe in communities where they haven't always felt welcomed. And so, um, yeah, do you, is, is there anything um, that you'd like to share with us about, you know, stuff like that? Well, what I can do is, thankfully, um, you know, with our our expansion, we are also um, expanding how we are um, collecting data and things like that. Um, and one of the ways in which is that we're shifting our um, internal data collection service from um, a, our server-based provider to a cloud-based. And we're using Salesforce, if you ever heard of Salesforce. And um, with that, um, our our hope is that to be able to generate gen, generate reports that um, in some cases won't be district specific, but they'll be zip code specific. So that way um, we'll be able to say how many people we're engaging or providing services to in a specific zip code. 
Perfect. And as soon as um, we achieve that capacity, you know, I'll be able to come in here and be like, all right, these are the zip codes within your district. And um, we've engaged these people and it's mostly been around this kind of service. Um, um, for, for this area. So I look forward to being able to do that and we are um, moving in that direction. Awesome. And awesome. One last question. Efrain Gonzalez also just asked, uh, uh, do you have counseling services for family members of an LGBTQ person to help them with, let's say, transitioning with their choice of transition? Yes, and that, that, that's something that's, um, that, that has come to our doors um, in various instances. And what I can tell you is that we offer short-term counseling and, uh, um, within that. That's why I was like talking about the disparity in mental health and things. And then if, if, if something is necessarily that needs to be, um, that needs more intense like therapy or more ongoing or consistent engagement, um, we, refer, we refer out to different places, whether it involves a young person transitioning, we refer to a place called the Ackerman um, Institute or, um, or um, other um, behavioral health mental health providers that could be able to provide a service that's more consistent according to that case. Every single case is different. So um, people reach out to us to initiate um, things, but if, you know, if it's something that needs to be more ongoing, then until we're able to um, provide that service on a more ongoing basis, we connect them to a, a trusted provider that we have in our networks. Awesome. And what time tomorrow is a town hall with the congressman? I think it's at one o'clock. Yeah, I don't know if it's a town hall. Okay. okay. It's invite, invite. By invite? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Stage. Uh, you have to come back. <laughs> I mean, cool. you absolutely have to come back. Um, Thank you. We thoroughly obviously enjoyed having you here thank you Ephraim for all those fantastic questions thank you Christine Malcolm um you know in September we meet again I'll share with you um you, all of our information oh okay you can always find our calendar at the CB Bronx CB 11 um website It'll give you the calendar and all the agendas uh, for the month. Um, September should be going on momentarily. You can also go and visit some past, um, you know, committee, any of the committees that you're interested in. Check out our past um, meetings. They're all on video. Um, please share with us also all of, um, we're going to follow you. Um, obviously on your social media platforms, um, and then share with us all of, you know, your flyers, your resource, anything you want us to share with the community, we'll be happy to support that. And then also share that within our network. Um, you have allies and supporters here. Um, and just, um, you know, we're just, um, a phone call away, you know, that, um, and I think for now, uh, we're going to get planning on that winter event, uh, cause mm -hmm. winter is coming. We could do a right. <laughs> game of thrones, um, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, sort of theme, but, um, yeah. Um, awesome. Thank you. Awesome. 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 Thank you so much. Hey, just Thank one you. last thing before Sage mm -hmm. goes, it's me, Cynthia. Hi. Oh, hi, Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia. <laughs> just. Hi, Sage. Um, just a quick reminder, Serena already just kind of mentioned it, but I want to reiterate. Um, you mentioned, you know, the need for volunteers or, or, you know, that sort of thing. When you find yourself in that situation, please email the community board because we do have, you know, our, so, our, our social media presence that we are working actively to continue to build up on. And um, I would happily, you know, we would happily post, yeah. you know, all your information, events, flyers, and requests for volunteers um, on our social media pages as well. Awesome. Yeah. Thank yeah. Just send, us, just, just send us an email. Um, Cynthia, can you put the Facebook, like the uh, CB Facebook info for Sage in the chat? We'll reach out to Let's reach out to them ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll, Malcolm, you'll. We'll reach out to you. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday evening. Yeah. And happy Pride. End of Pride. Happy right? Pride. Pride all year round, right? But yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we're just gonna Thank go you. through some.
some little um, housekeeping stuff and kind of go through some new business, old business. If you want to stay great, uh, send us the presentation. That'd be great too to have oh, so we okay. can share with our full board. Yeah, send it uh, all, all of you. I mean, the, the, the presentation is is really just our brochure. I can I can send you the digital version of it, but I'm also okay. going to give you the um the, the 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 physical copies so you can have them there at the office. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. So nice meeting all of you. Bye. All right. So that was exciting. Yeah. I may be a little time restricted. Okay. Sure. Okay. So Malcolm. Um. All right. So we're just gonna go through. Um. The next item on the agenda is um to review the draft minutes for the May uh committee meeting. And so uh, before we do that, we're just gonna, um, you know, we'll move forward um, with the most it's uh, to review and then the motion to approve. Um, we just want to kind of highlight really quickly the first annual uh, CB 11 Juneteenth celebration and Father's Day cookout that uh, we hosted on June 18th um, last Sunday, I believe, or um, the Sunday before last. Uh, the event was a really spectacular, unifying community event. We, um, the community, the community board, our electeds, um, our friends and our families, all came together in celebration. We received support from um, our borough president, uh, Madam Vanessa Gibson, our district attorney, Ms. Darcel Clark, uh, Councilwoman uh, Marjorie Velasquez, our assembly member, um, uh, Sicaro, our senator, um, Senator Gustavo Rivera, our council member, Oswald Feliz, um, our congress member, Richie Torres. Um, we were really, we felt um, the support um, as a community board. We were able to have a very, um, uh, an awesome event where we we shared the education around, um, you know, our um, Juneteenth American history. We celebrated and honored, um, you know, the accomplishments of an array of fantastic uh, Black dads within our community. Um, Mr. Joe Thompson received a proclamation and a citation. Mr. Oral Selkridge, uh, Mr. Angel Diaz, and uh, Dr. Um, Ty, uh, Tyrone Pope. Um, it's just a, a mouthful. I mean, we had food, we had music, we had healthy food demonstrations, we had gifts for the kids, free toys, face painting, sponsored by um, amazing sponsors, um, uh, Labor 79. We had support from the Morris Park bid. We also had support from the Belmont bid. We had support from Technology Sandbox, from Staples, from Blue Cross and Blue Shield, uh, Bronx Bound Books. I mean, the list this one, um, it, it just goes on. Um, amazing event. It was a really awesome event, um, and we're very proud of it. And um, our community, um, you know, community members, right, right, that were not, that aren't even part of the community board came through and helped out. There was a lot of sweat equity from family and friends. And so we just wanted to congratulate um, CB11, this community, um, this board, um, this committee in particular, and, um, you know, we look forward to next year's Juneteenth event. Um, so that's our recap. Did I miss anything? No, you okay. <laughs> and so um, we're up for the gallery session. Does anyone, um, did anyone sign up for the gallery? Not that I know of, no. Okay. So keeping in line with that, we didn't have anyone interested in speaking during the gallery session, and we're going to move forward to uh, the approval of the May minutes. I and so yep, uh, motion to approve. Malcolm second, and um, old business. So let's see what we have here. Um, so the one remaining item is just, I guess, um, the full board sort of, um, and the full. It doesn't necessarily need a full board approval and or review, but um, the creation of this uh, site visit form by this committee. Um, 
was 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 done right and then um uh jeremy um our uh manager um a cb manager thought it'd be great that we would share it um with the board to see if other committees wanted to utilize it as a whole for a different site visit um requests and so that's uh the one thing that's um pending um i sent an email um just circling back on that um on june 20th um to jeremy and then um new business we have um no committee meetings for july and august um, we will be resuming in september we will have our public hearing in september for the district needs report um and the budget request um and also just um wanted to share with everyone that we re reached out <laughs> if that's a word to the um office of management and budget for a city housing um in acknowledgement of the capital project um id 806 ham 20 EGCC for the $3,650,000 uh, requested in the um, FY23 budget for the upgrade of the community center at East Chester Gardens. We want to um, begin that conversation. We want to um, invite them to come to the committee. We want to invite um, NYCHA. We want to invite the East Chester um, Gardens um, uh, community center and any um, one in the community to have um, a discussion about how they would love um, to and or envision this community center to be um, and to kind of go over the blueprint that I know was already created. And um, and I think that's that's it for this. Yeah, well, I do want to bring up the one thing. Um, I know you spoke about the pedestrian plaza. Okay, yeah. And uh, I forgot the cross street. It's Bronxdale and... Between Bronxdale, so it's Bronxdale, Anton, and Neil. Right, that's where it is. There is a pedestrian plaza there that we um, collectively as a committee decided that, uh, well, d thought that we should discuss and maybe enhance the plaza, maybe have a, because it doesn't necessarily look like a plaza. Um, it's just uh, kind of like an open space it's with dead, boulders. It's dead space. It's dead space. Uh, so we thought that why not have uh, maybe some tables, some chairs, some umbrellas, kind of um, reminiscent to the way that it looks like in um, in the city, um, the city's pedestrian plaza, like, you know, in Manhattan. Um, and so that's our first sort of target, but we would love to then start there and then um, visit all the other pedestrian plazas within this district so that we could have adequate uh, seating and it could really truly be a uh, could really truly be a pedestrian plaza for our community. Yeah, so DOT does have a plaza program where they, where you could provide, where they will provide funding to transform the space. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's something we can be out to during the summertime, um, you know, to see how to get that done uh, and then bring it back to the full board to discuss as a possible project before it can you know, get done because, you know, part of our, our goal here is community development and community development also means opening spaces that can be used for programming and to be for our community. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. other than that. Other than that, um, as a committee, we've reached out to um, all the city agencies, parks, DOT, sanitation, transportation, um, education, uh, housing, um, just about really all of them, letting them know that we are interested in meeting and discussing our budget, um, wanting and, um, you know, presenting, um, our needs and, and all of it. So, um, so I just want, we wanted to, um, inform the community that we've been doing that and we've done that. We've submitted our requests for meetings. We invited everyone to meet with us and if we should hear from them throughout the summer. Um, great. Um, and we'll keep everyone posted and abreast. And I think we should also invite um, the uh, our fellow community members and organizations to email, send an email to us um, about any budget requests that they would like to be. Think that's important to be added. Yes. To the uh, the budget priorities request mm -hmm. um, as you move into September. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ephraim. I'm, I'm glad that um, the meeting was informative. Thank you, everybody. You know, with a little engine that could, but we're, you know, we're here, we're doing the work, and we appreciate everyone for joining us. Have a happy, healthy um, summer, and we will see you in September.
Bye-bye. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, wait. Christina, do you want to say? No. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, wait. Let's, let's call the meeting okay. at 8.14 p.m. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. Awesome. Great meeting, Serena.